9, looking here at verse 1, I draw your attention there. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Verse 2 says, and walk in what? Love. As Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Let us pray. Father, let us say. Father tells us that we need to, number one, find the right person. Y'all know they do that. Uh, they tell you this way. Just get in the car and drive around. Get around, get around. I'll get around. They, they tell you to go get them. In other words, all of them. But you got to get around and get out and find that person. Y'all know that to be true as far as Hollywood's concerned? Then one of the first things that they tell you is that you got to find the right person person. Find the right person. Next thing they tell you is that when you find the right person, you don't really know what happens, but all of a sudden you just fall in love. I put it down on my phone. Only do we just fall in love, the world shows us that we have to fix our hopes and our dreams on that person. It was Tony Braxton saying, I can't even breathe without you. Man. She doesn't put that person in God's position. Huh? Only God's supposed to have that kind of room over your life that you can't even take a breath without. It. And model two, which would be plan A, because plan B was Hollywood's way. But plan A is God's way. As seen here in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1, where it's picking it up, he says, Be ye therefore followers, and some of your translations may say this, imitators. Right? And that's the right word that we want to use right here. Be ye therefore imitators of God as what? As dear children. I don't know many people say, I just want to die old and be grumpy. <laughs> By myself. When we get to chapter 4, he tells us, he says, to walk in Christ. To live like him, in other words. He says, make sure that you have concern for others. Make sure that your concern and your focus is not all about you and what you got going on. Put on the new man. He says, in other words, if you used to steal, don't do it no more. Huh? He says, if you used to have ugly words and you used to have unwholesome words, he said, don't even let that stuff proceed out of your mouth. Hmm? I'm talking about relationships, how to build them, how to keep them concrete, how to keep them solid. You got to continue to have a mind where it's not about yourself and it's not about your own needs. But it's about the needs. We ought to be willing to allow people to make mistakes. We got to get to the place to where we even allow people to make their mistakes. How can they learn if they don't mess up every now and then? God's plan for you in a relationship is the place all that you are in his hands. Amen. And let him mold you. Amen. Let him shape you. And I told the church last night we preached to let the pastor coach you through. Amen. Huh? You got to get to the place to where when, when the pastor calls a play, you fall in line and, and, and get in your position. Amen. That way we can carry out and win the game. We're not playing a game, we know that. But guess what? There are some things that God has gave me a strategy to help us win the loss. And when we don't listen to the coach, man, it's going to be a mess. It's to have that type of heart that whenever somebody calls on you, you don't try to assess the situation. You don't try to say, well, I wonder how much money I got to pay. I wonder what I got to do. I see, I had to drive over there. I got to listen to you. I don't know what kind of shape they are. I don't know what kind of people. Don't go through all that. The bottom line, if you can help somebody, help them. It's not about how you fix the other man. But it's how you fix you. If you don't hear nothing else in this message about this relationship that I'm talking about, hear that. That when you get you right, Everybody else will be right. Amen.